Hello, this is Reza from Red Acad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, access levels in a workspace and what are different levels of access and how you should set them up to have a best practice implemented in your workspaces in Power BI. Let's see. In my training and courses, I always see people have uh, mistakenly set up the incorrect uh, role or access in their workspaces. So that is why I want to talk about that in this video. Um, in old version of Power BI workspace, we had basically two types of role, edit role and a view role. Edit would edit the content, view would view the content, and we also had the option uh, for admin, of course. So it was quite simple. In the new uh, way of Power BI, we have a, a little bit different uh, configuration which I'm going to talk about that from this four, le four levels of access let's uh, first talk one by one what are these levels of access let's uh, start with the viewer role viewer role uh, if you give an, a user a viewer role that user can see everything in that um, in that workspace in terms of dashboard report and workbooks no uh, data set and data flows uh, this would be all read-only access that user won't even be able to use analyze in excel or get inside or anything like that the user would be able to use the result of a data flow the stored result of a data flow but not the data flow itself won't be able to change that won't be able to edit anything this is a mere viewer read-only role that is how the viewer works. Uh, but I'm not the fan of the viewer roles. I'll explain a little bit later uh, why uh, there are better replacements for that for your users. We'll talk about that. The next role is contributor role. Contributor is uh, the edit access on the content. Anyone with this role can edit the content. This role can access to everything and the data set and the data flows, of course. Um, this role can create content, as you see the create button up there. Uh, this user can use Analyze in Excel, can check the usage metrics of a report, can go to a data set. This user can copy a content from one workspace to another workspace that has access to. Uh, this user can schedule it to refresh or things like the scheduled data set to refresh, can delete the content. This user can publish a content from Power BI Desktop to this, uh, to this workspace, but cannot publish app. So publish, uh, there are like two different publish options in Power BI. One publish uh, is when you publish your uh, solution from Power BI Desktop to workspace. Contributor can do that. Another is when you publish the content from your workspace into an app, which contributor cannot do that. So contributor is a role for developer group. It's ideal for developer group. They can go and edit the content. They can access the content that another developer produced there, and they can all contribute there in a really good way. That is why it's called contributor role. Now, the next role is member, which is a very important role. Unfortunately, this role doesn't have a really good name. Member doesn't really say what the role does. Member can do anything that contributor can, plus member can publish app. This is a very important uh, addition to the member role. Member can also set the access level of uh, member level or anything underneath. And member can share individual items in addition to everything that edit role does. So let's talk about them one by one. First, uh, what is Publish App? When you build a Power BI solution for, uh, for uh, your users, you don't give them access to your um, dev environment because while they have access to that environment, your developers go and change that content. You should separate these two. That is why we have Power BI apps and I've uh, created a um, video and blog post about what Power BI apps are, how you can use it to separate dev environment from user environment. Developers can go and change the content while the users are using it because they are in two separate environments. They won't affect each other. 
um, that is the beauty of Power BI apps. And whenever ready, uh, whenever content is ready, the uh, user uh, developers can publish it to the end user. Uh, so I encourage you to go and check what is Power BI apps. Now, uh, the main important part here in this video is that member is the role that has access to publish app, not the developer. And that separation is very important because um, you might have multiple developers with, de uh, with contributor role to dev, uh, to dev workspace. But only few people, um, you can call it deployment manager, deployment group, deployment gatekeepers, there are different names for that, but definitely member is not the best one in those. Uh, these users would have member role and they can publish that app. They will make sure that everything is ready. They have usually a checklist. They go through that checklist. Is this tested enough for user? Is this content uh, for the right audience? And things like that. They will go through all the checklist. And if things are ready, they can publish it as an app to the user. And they can al also unpublish it or update the app. That is the difference between member and contributor users. Your dev users should not have member access. Your uh, deployment users should have member access, which is usually a smaller group than your contributor uh, role. Member also can set access. If I'm a member of this workspace, I can uh, add someone else as a member of this workspace. I can someone as a contributor or viewer role. So I can give them the same access as I have or underneath. That is something that member role can do. Member role also can share items individually. Consider member role as a person who deployed the content to the end user. So member role can give access to people. Member role can publish the content as an app. Member role can share this. So member is kind of really a, a deployment person, sharing individually. Um, Admin role has all access that member role has, plus this role can edit or up, uh, update or delete the workspace and can add other admins. So if you are making someone an admin of a role just to give others uh, access level, you can do that with uh, member. You don't need that person to be admin, right? If you are making someone admin, so that this person can publish app, you can use member. A lot of usage of admin can be used with member, unless you want really a person to be able to uh, change the workspace itself. Right? So now that you know these, what are the best practices? I won't usually recommend using a viewer role because viewer role, um, think about it. What is viewer role? Viewer role is access to all content in the workspace. Now, if I have 15 reports, I might have only five reports out of those 15 reports ready for test. Why should I give uh, uh, to my users, right? So there are two thinking about viewer role. Some people think that I use viewer role for my end user, which is not uh, good because um, then your dev environment and user environment is the same. You should use Power BI app to separate those um, and then give access to users through Power BI app. Some people say I use viewer role as a test user, which again, that can be also challenged because if it is a test user, if you have 15 reports, if you want to just share three test ready reports for the user, you just share them individually rather than giving them viewer access. Some people also prefer to create a totally separate workspace for test, which in that case, publish to app can be also used for test users. So viewer role, I'm not a big fan of that role. I don't recommend you to use it. Contributor role, use it only for your developer group, for people who are building Power BI reports. Uh, only that group, don't give them member access. Member access should be only limited to a very few uh, group of people who are deployment manager, gatekeepers, they know which content should be pushed to the end user based on the checklist, they go through that checklist and check it. And admin, only a very few people who really want to control the, uh, the workspace itself, editing the workspace or changing it. Some of these roles, you can use security groups for those roles. Some of them, you just, you just use normal individual account. Whenever you can use security group, I always recommend to use that security groups because that would make the administration of this even much 
easier. I highly recommend you uh, learn more with the links that are down in the description below to my blog post. There are links to um, Power BI apps, um, dev user environment, and all those configurations. Make sure to read them through. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos of Power BI and AI. Thank you.